everyone, I'm Ben Woodruff, and this is Kethry the Peregrine Falcon. And in today's falconry video, I'm going to be talking about different styles of flight used by different families of birds of prey. But before I do that, I always like to remind everyone that falconry is not pet keeping. We do not keep birds of prey as pets. They're not a prestigious animal to use to show off with. Uh, falconry is a hunting sport. It's over 5,000 years old and it's a natural experience for both predator and prey. In the wild, this falcon would be hunting every day of her life, hunting prey. Falconers train their birds to build a relationship of trust and to work together as a team and we let the birds fly totally free and hunt wild quarry as they would as a regular wild bird. The first family of birds of prey that I want to talk about are the large falcons, such as peregrine falcons. Now, the earliest falconry with falcons was most likely done in the Middle East using saker falcons. And these saker falcons were trained to hunt directly off the fist, chasing after rabbits and a large bird called a habara bustard. Um, that is a very ancient technique that is still practiced today, but most of the rest of the world trains large falcons like this to do what is called waiting on. Falcon wings are long and skinny. They're so narrow that the falcon cannot glide. They can't soar. The real strength of a falcon is to give it an opportunity to dive or stoop. So we train these falcons to circle above us thousands of feet in the air and then we flush up quarry such as a pheasant or a duck and the falcon, if things are all going well, will dive hundreds of miles an hour and knock their prey out of the sky. This utilizes the natural gifts and abilities of a large falcon. So again, even though the earliest falcon training uh, in the Middle East was a level flight, um, most big falcons such as peregrines, jeer falcons, lanner falcons, and, and sakers are often trained from a waiting on position up above the falconer. The next family of birds and flight style I want to talk about are the occipiters or the forest hawks. Occipiters like this northern goshawk here are forest dwellers for the most part. There's occipiter species all over the world. They have short rounded wings and a long tail which makes them very maneuverable in dense trees. Uh, they're incredibly fast and their reaction time is otherworldly compared to the other families of birds of prey. Now, flying goshawks and smaller occipiters like Cooper's hawks and sharp shin hawks, uh, people usually use them in a very cut and dry manner or what we call a shotgun approach. They'll walk along with their hawk, they'll flush a rabbit, flush a duck, and the hawk chases as fast as it can and catches them and if it doesn't, it comes back. Now there are other ways to train occipiters, but that is the most common way and it's a very direct and effective bird to hunt. Because of that, uh, most people who fly occipiters will not fly any other birds because they can hunt and hunt and hunt all day. Where some of the other species like a red-tailed hawk or a big falcon, you might hunt, catch one, one prey item and then you're done. But a hawk like this, you could fly all day, every day catching quarry and be very successful. The next family of birds of prey that I want to talk about are the Budios, or the soaring hawks. Um, in North America, we think of birds like a red-tailed hawk, rough-legged hawk, ferruginous hawk, Swainson's hawk. These are all Budios. Um, these Budios, or soaring hawks, in other parts of the world are referred to as buzzards. So the term buzzard, uh, when used to describe a vulture, is actually, actually an inaccurate use of the term. Now, Budios, are do not have a long history in falconry. It's really only the past hundred years that they have been used. Budios like the red-tailed hawk have proven their worth. They're not as fast as some of the other birds we're talking about today, but they have a lot of power and they're very good in level chases. Birds such as the red-tailed hawk, which is a bird of prey often used by new falconers, uh, have been used to hunt cottontail rabbits, jackrabbits, and uh, also squirrels. Now, the flight style in open country is normally to walk with the red-tailed hawk on your fist, and if a rabbit is spotted, the hawk is just allowed to fly after it and attempt to catch it. In forested areas, whether hunting squirrels or cottontail rabbits, then the falconer will often train the red-tailed hawk to follow from tree to tree, and any prey that is flushed up, the hawk can pursue. 
Now the next family I want to talk about is just one species, another type of falcon, but a very small one, the Merlin falcon. Now uh, larger falcons like peregrine falcons, I already mentioned the traditional way to fly them. Merlins are the second smallest falcon in North America but they have athleticism that can only be compared to the jeer falcon, which is the largest falcon in the world. Merlins have a rich history in Europe and Asia and the Middle East uh, where they were used to hunt larks. Here in North America, we normally use Merlins to hunt flocks of European starlings. Now in the United States and Canada, European starlings are invasive, non-native species that do a lot of damage to native plants and animals. And uh, they, in a, they range in flocks, numbering into the hundreds of thousands. Uh, Merlin trainers will often train a Merlin to pursue in open country these entire flocks. It's very similar to watching a shark working a flock, uh, sorry, a shark working a school of fish. Uh, and in a similar way, watching this falcon just dive through hundreds of thousands of starlings attempting to catch one, it, it's, it's, uh, it's amazing to watch. And uh, wild Merlins do this as well, but training a Merlin and sharing in that uh, amazing ability of flight and watching them hunt and work a flock is incredible. There are many species of eagle in the world, uh, but the eagle species that's been used for thousands of years in the sport of falconry is the golden eagle. Uh, the golden eagle is also the most widespread eagle species. Golden eagles are adaptable and wherever they live in the world, they'll find what they can and hunt it. Uh, in the United States, we normally use golden eagles to hunt jackrabbits. I've also trained them to hunt geese. The flight style is very similar to that of a budio. Most eagle trainers fly their eagles directly off the fist at jackrabbits, but they can be trained to soar overhead in a waiting on flight, somewhat similar to a falcon. Takes them longer to get up, but the dive is incredible. Uh, and many eagle trainers, depending on the terrain they live, will have them follow from tree to tree or cliff to cliff. But the flight style, again, is very similar to a giant red-tailed hawk. Now, owls have a rich history of use by humans, but usually in ritual senses or even almost as a pet. The use of owls as a falconry bird is not all that long. Uh, owls are effective hunters, but their mentality is a lot different than that of a falcon or a hawk or an eagle, where uh, these diurnal birds of prey, they see prey, they're hungry, they want it, they go after it. Um, not so with owls. Owls seem to think they're very easily distracted during a hunt and you have to have conditions right for them to be effective hunters. There are many owls that are effective falconry birds, but the ones that get used the most are members of the eagle owl family, such as the Eurasian eagle owl and the great horned owl. Now these large powerful owls have a grip um, at least as large as a red-tailed hawk in the case of a great horned owl, and they are effective hunters. But in order to hunt them effectively and have their mentality really be keyed in on the task at hand, it's, it's wise to fly them at dusk or at night. Now, many of these owls can be trained to be perfectly content in the day being around people, but there's something that happens at sunset with members of the eagle owl family and their hunting instinct really seems to kick in. Now this of course is difficult for humans to hunt at night and in many states and many countries it is illegal to take quarry in the dark. Uh, but in some states you can hunt jackrabbits at sunset or at night with a, with a great horned owl and they can be trained to do so. The flight style is very similar to that of Budios, uh, and they are typically flown directly from the fist at quarry. Now the most recent addition to falconry as a sport as far as terms of new flight styles comes from this species, the Harris Hawk. Uh, now the Harris Hawk, or it's actually called a Harris's Hawk, but most falconers have slanged the term down to just Harris Hawk. Its build is very similar to that of a goshawk. It's got a long tail, comparatively short rounded wings. It's more easy going than an occipiter, much closer in mentality to that of a budio. But this hawk species is the only bird of prey that will hunt in an organized pack, just like wolves. It's like a little feathered velociraptor, which is really fun. So they range anywhere from the cactus forests of Arizona, southward all the way down to South America. And they can be trained and have been trained successfully all over the world now to hunt in organized packs. They're easygoing, 
and their mentality, uh, being pack hunters and being social, like humans, lends themselves very well to the sport. Well, if you enjoyed this video and like learning more about the different flight styles, uh, feel free to check out some of my other falconry videos online or subscribe to my YouTube channel.